lock the doors, turn out the lights, and climb into bed. It's time for Hillbilly Dead Time Stories. In the United States, when someone mentions witches, our thoughts immediately drift to Salem, Massachusetts. It only makes sense considering that the Salem witch trials are still a hot topic today, 329 years after the last one was executed for being a witch. Salem has embraced its dark history and welcomes thousands of tourists every year. Most come to see the sights associated with the witch trials and the streets are crawling with tourists through the whole month of October. If you dig a little deeper into America's belief in witches, you will find that Salem wasn't the first witch hunt to take place here. That actually happened 30 years earlier in 1662, a witch hunt that would result in seven trials and four executions. It was late March of 1662 in Hartford, Connecticut. John and Bethia Kelly were grieving the loss of their eight-year-old daughter. Little Elizabeth had been fine in recent days. That was before she had spent time with her neighbor, Goody Ayers. The family, grief-stricken, were desperate for answers. They could only reflect upon the words that their daughter had said the night she returned from the neighbor's house. Father, father, Help me, help me. Good wife Ayers is upon me. She chokes me. She kneels on my belly. She will break my bowels. She pinches me. She will make me black and blue. After Elizabeth's death, whispers of witchcraft enveloped the town. Fingers were pointed towards several townspeople. Panic ripped through the streets. For Hartford had been the site of the first ever execution of a suspected witch in the colonies a generation ago on May 26, 1647. On that day, Alice Young was sent to the gallows erected at the Hartford's Meeting House Square. Connecticut's old state house now stands where the gallows once stood. Witchcraft was one of the twelve capital crimes decreed by Connecticut's colonial government in 1642. The legal precedent cited? The Word of God. Biblical passages such as Exodus chapter 22, verse 18, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27, A man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. Between 1642 and 1662, seven people were executed for being witches. However, it was in Hartford in 1662, 30 years before the infamous Salem Witch Trials, that a witch hunt hysteria took hold, resulting in seven trials and four executions. Shortly after Elizabeth's death, the devoutly religious Anne Cole had an affliction that caused her to shake violently and spout blasphemy. A witness said that Anne Cole was taken with strange fits wherein she, or rather the devil, held a discourse for a considerable time. Anne Cole claimed that she had been bewitched by her neighbor, Rebecca Greensmith. As was the case in this time period, if a person wasn't very clean, kept to themselves, or had a less than charming personality, they were oftentimes assumed to be a witch. That was the case here. Rebecca was described by a townsperson to be a lewd, ignorant, considerably aged woman. Keep in mind that the Kellys had already blamed Goody Ayers for the death of their daughter. 
Soon, those accused started to accuse others as being actual witches, and this in some cases included their spouses. Neighbors began testifying against neighbors and taking sides. Goody Ayer's husband, maybe in an attempt to spare his wife, accused Rebecca Greensmith of being a witch. Greensmith did not do herself any favors. The most damning testimony supposedly came from her. Maybe it was out of spite or her way of ridiculing the courts, but she admitted to having familiarity with the devil and said that at Christmas they would have a merry meeting to form a covenant. Greensmith implicated her husband and said that she had met in the woods with seven other witches including Goody Ayers, Mary Sanford, and Elizabeth Seeger. Neighbors testified that they had seen Seeger in the woods dancing with other women and cooking mysterious concoctions in black kettles. Two of the suspects were subjected to the swimming test in which their hands and feet were bound and they were cast into the water to test the theory that witches are unable to sink. After they were tried, the Greensmiths were indicted for not having the fear of God before thine eyes. Thou hast entertained familiarity with Satan, the grand enemy of God and mankind, and by his help hast acted things in a preternatural way. The court's verdict? According to the law of God and the established law of the commonwealth, thou deserve to die. Rebecca Greensmith had confessed. Her husband, Nathaniel Greensmith, had protested his innocence, but they both met the same fate, death by hanging. Sanford was also sent to the gallows. Mary Barnes of Farmington, Connecticut, was swept up in the area's witch hunt and executed alongside the Greensmiths. Anne Cole reportedly regained her health after the executions. Goody Ayers fled Hartford and she was never captured. Seeger, on the other hand, was finally convicted of witchcraft in 1665, but the governor reversed the verdict the following year. The four executions of suspected witches in Hartford were to be the last in Connecticut. Another hysteria broke out in Fairfield, Connecticut in 1692, but none of those convicted were put to death. Connecticut held its final witch trial in 1697, 50 years after Alice Young's initial execution. During that period, there were 46 prosecutions and at least 11 executions. Descendants of some of those 11 colonists are seeking posthumous pardons and apologies similar to those that occurred in Massachusetts for victims of the Salem witch trials. But Connecticut's Board of Pardons and Paroles has a policy not granting posthumous pardons. The descendants are now pressing for a gubernatorial proclamation to clear the names of their ancestors. No. 